everything we've worked on so far has used a fixed set of sample cards. But of course, this app only becomes useful if users can actually customize the list of cards they see. This means adding a new view that lists all existing cards and lets the user add a new one to that list, which is all stuff you've seen before. However, there's an interesting catch this time that requires something new to fix that's worth working this through. First, we need to state the controls whether our editing screen is currently visible. So over in content view, add a new property up here that will say, uh, let's say here, at state, private var showing edit screen is false. Next, we add a button to flip this boolean to true and so I'll find the code we had before to have uh, voiceover being enabled and not down here, this one here. And before that, so just here, I'm gonna add some new code to show another button. So we'll say here, there's a V stack with a H stack, then a spacer. And now we'll do a button that toggles the showing edit screen boolean, like that. And the label for this will be an image system name of plus dot circle. So a nice adding cards kind of plus. We'll add the same styling before. So that is a little bit of padding, a background color of black with opacity of 0.7. Then a clip shape of circle. Like so. Uh, then uh, after the H stack, so to push this thing to the top, I'll put a spacer like so. Then around the whole V stack, I'm gonna say we have a foreground style of white with a font of large title and a little bit of padding that stays on the edge. There we go. Now we're gonna design a new edit cards view to encode and decode a card array to user defaults. Before we do that, I wanna make the card struct conform to codable. So in the card Swift file here, make this thing conform to codable. Uh, if you're wondering, one of the challenges for this uh, particular project is gonna to be to rethink the way we store data, to either write to a documents directory somewhere or use Swift data. This is part of the point, making you try things out and experiment and experiment yourself and learn by writing your own code. So in this case, you can use your defaults, you can see it run again, but there are other options too. Anyway, now we're gonna make a new SwiftUI view called Edit Cards uh, here. So I'll press SwiftUI view, call this thing Edit Cards, that. And this needs to have its own card array and be wrapped in a navigation stack. So we add a done button to dismiss the view. I have a list showing all existing cards, add swipe to delete for those cards, I have a section at the top of the list so users can add a new card to the list and have methods to load and save data from user defaults. And we've looked at literally all that code previously. I'm not gonna explain it from scratch again here, but I hope you can stop to appreciate how far you've come along the way. So we have this default code right now. Let's start adding some code here. Firstly, a new property so we can dismiss the view. So that's environment uh, backslash dot dismiss var dismiss, then properties to store the card, the array, plus their prompt and answer text that's being typed in right now. So we'll say at state, private var cards is a card array. Then at state, private var, new prompt is an empty string. And at state, private var, new answer is an empty string. Then in the body here, we have our navigation stack with a list inside. There we have a section to do adding a new card. This will have text fields binding to that prompt and answer property. So we'll say the text field for the prompt, the text bound to dollar new prompt, and then text field called answer with text bound to new answer. And critically, we'll add an add card button with an action that calls an as yet unwritten add card method, we'll do that later on. So that's for adding new cards. Below that will be a section uh, which loops over all our cards. So for each zero to cards.count ID of backslash dot self, one index coming in. And now we'll do a V stack with alignment 
of leading. We'll show the prompt for our card here. So I'll say, let's do the text card at that index dot prompt in a font of headline. And then below that, again, the text card index dot answer, this time with a foreground style of secondary. So it's a bit smaller on the screen, uh, but sorry, a bit more transparent on the screen. I'm gonna add an on delete to this. Again, it's not written yet. On delete perform remove cards. So, uh, don't do that for me, or Xcode. Remove cards like that. Uh, that'll be written again in a moment. Then for our list itself, we have a nav title with edit cards. Then a toolbar where the button's saying done. Action will be uh, done, also unwritten just yet. Uh, then another one on appear. Perform, uh, don't do that, because seriously, you look like you're gonna fill in the nice way, you fill it in the hard way every time. Perform, load data. Okay, so a bunch of as yet unwritten methods and that's okay here. So, let's work through these. We've got done. <laughs> that was gonna simply call dismiss. Uh, what else we got? We got load data here. Uh, this thing, like I said, it's gonna read from user defaults in my code here. It'll be your challenge later on to do it differently. We'll say func load data. We'll say if let data, if let data equals user defaults dot standard dot data for the key cards. If we can read things for the string cards, then can we decode it? If let data, uh, decoded, sorry, is try question mark, JSON decoder dot decode a card array from our data. And if that works, great, that becomes our new cards property. We're gonna do uh, adding cards uh, up here, but in order to add cards, we're gonna have a way to save cards too. And so we have a little counterpart to loading data, which we can say is called simply save data. And it's reverse, so if let data is try json encoder.encode our cards, then user defaults dot standard dot set. And we want set uh, our data for the key cards. Now that's gonna be called from this new add card method. Uh, so we'll do it here, func add card. We'll first trim out white space because you can't obviously see that on the screen. Uh, we'll say let trimmed prompt be our new prompt, trimming characters in uh, white space white please, white spaces like that. And let trimmed answer be new answer dot trimming characters in the same thing, white spaces, boom. So that's the same thing about white space. And if these are empty, we're gonna just bail out. They've not emptied a prompt or an answer, don't continue. So we can say guard our trim prompt is empty is false. And our trimmed answer is empty is false else return, bail out. But if we're still here, we're good to go. We can make a new card from our trimmed prompt and our trimmed answer and place that at the beginning of the deck. So we'll say cards.insert that card at position zero and call save data. The last thing is that swipe to delete method, which is remove cards at offsets and index set. This will just pass it straight onto that remove at offsets property of our array. So cards remove at offsets, those offsets, and call save data. That, yeah, there we go, great. <laughs> Is that done? Yeah, it's basically done. That's almost all of this edit cards view complete. But before we can use it, we need to add some more code to content view so it shows the sheet on demand and also calls reset cards when dismissed. Now we've used sheets previously, but there's one extra technique I wanna show you. You can attach a function to your sheet. And this will automatically be run when the sheet's dismissed. This is not helpful for times you wanna try and pass back data from the sheet, but here, we're just gonna call reset cards, so it's perfect. So, we're gonna find the uh, content view here, find the outermost 
Z stack, this one right here, boom. It's a lot of code now. There we go. And we'll add a new sheet to this. So we can say dot sheet. This thing is presented on this, as on this mess right there, by the way. This thing is presented when dollar showing edit screen is true. On dismiss, we want to call reset cards like that. And for the content, we can just do edit cards, open close like that. And that works. But now you're getting more experience with Swift UI. I want to show an alternative way to get the same result. When we use this sheet modifier, we've got to give Swift UI a function it can run that returns the view to show in the sheet. For us, that is this closure here. You can see it returns a view to show in the sheet, just edit cards inside. It creates and returns a new view, which is what the sheet wants, what to show. Now, when we write edit cards open close like this, we're relying on something called syntactic sugar. We're treating our view struct like a function because Swift silently treats that as a call to the views initializer. So in practice, we've just written edit cards dot in it like that, just in a shorter way. And this all matters because rather than making this whole closure that calls the edit cards initializer, we can actually pass the edit cards initializer directly to the sheet. We can say that this thing has the content of its sheet from calling edit cards dot in it. So call that function when you're ready to go. So we're saying when you're worried the content of a sheet, just call the edit cards initializer, it'll send you back the view to use. Now this approach only works because edit cards has an initializer that accepts no parameters. If you want to pass in specific values, you've got to use a closure based approach instead. Anyway. As well as calling reset cards when the view is dismissed, we also want to call it when the view first appears. That means saying uh, to this thing here, we also have an on appear perform the wrong version once again, Xcode. Thanks for that. Uh, you call reset cards like that. So when the view is first shown, reset cards is called. And when it's shown after we have our sheet being dismissed, reset cards is also called. This means we can ditch our example cards data and instead make it an empty array that gets filled at runtime. And so when I find our cards property up here, we repeat the example card 10 times. We'll instead say you are an empty card array like that. Now to finish up with content view, we gotta make this thing load that cards property on demand. And this starts with the same code we just wrote in edit card, okay? So over in our edit cards property here, this load data method, we're reading that data for key cards, then decoding the card array and putting in cards. Just, just take that whole thing, take that whole thing out of there, control C, go back to content view and just paste it on in like that. And now our reset cards method, this one here, this is the one that sets time remaining and is active. They're still valid, but that example live bridge move isn't needed anymore. Instead, we'll simply call load data. So we get data from user default every time. So now hopefully, I'll press command R. We should have a blank set of data. Let's find out. Boom, blank, great. I'll press plus here. And you can go, go ahead and add your own examples. Now, uh, what is the capital city of Wales? And the answer, of course, is Cardiff. And press add card. There it is. Swipe to delete, which should work. There we go. Go back to here. And there's our new card. With that last change, our app is complete. Good job.